welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today is the letter P, and P stands for pseudo-archaeology, or fringe archaeology. Now you may be wondering, what is pseudo-archaeology? Well, pseudo- or fringe archaeology is an alternative archaeological narrative. It often invokes fantastical elements, or perverts how the public perceives the past. Pseudo-archaeologists invite their readers into a world of hidden secrets and conspiracies. For example, with the chariots of the gods, the suggestion was that the Nazca lines had been drawn in order to allow alien spacecraft to locate and land in Nazca. What many deem science fiction is often taken to be an alternative truth, and there is a general mistrust of institutions which teach otherwise. Academics, for example, are seen as the architects of grand conspiracies hiding the truth from the masses. Pseudo-archaeologists often adopt outdated theoretical models, such as the idea of hyperdiffusionism, one civilization spreading monuments, for example, across the world in the Neolithic. Ironically, however, they do appeal to academic authority in order to prove their point. Einstein, for example, in one of these books, was quoted as an expert in geology. A major characteristic of pseudo-archaeology is that it appeals to the mystery that we all have about the past. It appeals to that sense of wonder that we all get, um, but it's also very, very charismatic in how it does it. And in this way, um, it can often talk people into almost anything uh, that they are willing to suggest. Pseudo-archaeological and historical texts are often very attractively priced, and also very attractively published with large pictures and a coffee table look. Frankly, most of the most popular archaeologists we know could be considered as pseudo. Indiana Jones and Tomb Raider are very popular, and if most archaeologists are honest, they are often the reason that they got involved in archaeology in the first place. Whereas archaeological texts which dispute pseudo-claims are often very expensive. This makes them almost inaccessible to many people, and almost certainly not very interesting to most. In other words, archaeologists tend to preach to the choir when they're trying to dispute pseudo-archaeology. So the best, uh, probably the most well-known uh, example where pseudo-archaeology comes head-to-head -head with public consciousness, but also actually uh, the, the academic world of archaeology, is um, the Monument of Stonehenge. Stonehenge has long attracted people seeking out mystery. Pseudo-archaeologists claim that this monument is waiting to be decoded, that it holds arcane knowledge, and that it is somehow even connected to other monuments across the world in a worldwide conspiracy. Groups such as Druids take advantage of this mysterious atmosphere to justify their claims on the monument. Other people attempt to draw ley lines which connect the monument to other buildings which weren't even around when the monument was built. Also, the notion that Stonehenge is connected to space and alien activity abounds in pseudo-archaeological literature. Stonehenge, therefore, is at the epicentre of pseudo-archaeological thought from around the world, building up a mist of mystery in its wake. The question is, should archaeologists intervene in some way? Should we step in and somehow um, create, uh, <laughs> create a, a cordon around the monument uh, and insist that people understand it properly um, according to proper scientific methods and, and all of this information that we've gathered? Um, or uh, has the monument actually taken on a life of its own? Has it been appropriated by the pseudo-archaeologists? We must take a moment to consider why it is that Stonehenge is still here to see. Many groups throughout time have adopted this monument, burying their dead in and around it, and therefore kept it going. Who's to say that Druids aren't just the latest custodians of the monument of Stonehenge? Well, we can trace the origins of modern Druids back to early archaeologist William Stukeley. He founded an order of Druids in order to better understand the monument of Stonehenge, and, in the 18th century, let loose a mania of Druidism. These associations continue to this day. So you might say that it's all archaeology's fault in this instance. However, archaeologists are now reclaiming Stonehenge by adopting a more approachable publication technique and frankly 
having a sense of humour and a humanity about how we talk about the past, we're able to bring our passion to the public at large. And no longer are we just publishing for other archaeologists, taking our valuable knowledge with us essentially to the grave. Pseudo-archaeology is not something which is straightforward. And, and actually, really, the reason why it's such a complicated issue is largely because archaeology has been guilty of being uncharismatic and largely uninterested in sharing what are, ex are extremely exciting ideas with the public. Um, more often than not, um, archaeology uh, for the public is seen as revolving around objects and things, or a castle, or a mask, that kind of thing, rather than actually talking about people and places in terms of their social interaction with with the people in the past and um, discussing what are what can be mysteries such as who built Stonehenge the, this is a mystery which is real and it's a mystery which archaeology is bit by bit solving so it's one of those really bizarre uh, issues really uh, it's created uh, or indeed has been created arguably by apathy on the part of archaeologists uh, in many ways we have failed um, the public at large, and, and uh, only recently, really, has there been more of a, a tendency, more of a desire to actually grasp this nettle and take some responsibility um, for Im imbuing people with the same enthusiasm and showing them the same wonders that we see every day when we go to work. Then again, your average digger may disagree with every day bit there, but you know what I mean. The complications and the the complexity and the beauty inherent in that um, is something which uh, is, is, is a real thing and it's our responsibility to share that. So uh, <clears throat> that's been P, pseudo-archaeology um, or fringe archaeology. Um, hopefully you found this video uh, entertaining or useful. Feel free to comment below. Um, if you have any questions, send me a question and I shall get back to you um, via our new section, which is called Questions of Doom. Um, and hopefully um, the answer will be useful. Uh, we do have uh, a Facebook page. All you need to do is search for us on Facebook, Archeo Soup Productions, type it in, click like, and often things appear on that page that don't make it onto this channel. Um, also, as well, uh, please do subscribe to us. Feel free to, to subscribe to Archeo Soup and... Um, uh, I will be happy. <laughs> so, um, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.